What's up, YouTube? I'm gonna try to make this video as short as possible. It's cold out here, and it's like two something, two o'clock in the morning. So I wrote down a list of small block Chevy, big block Chevy, small block Ford, big block Ford. This is a very big debate. Ford versus Chevy. A lot of people are going to get butt hurt, both Ford and Chevy guys. Lately, I've gotten some friends since I got the 55 who are just straight Chevy guys. And I've always been a Ford guy for the most part. <clears throat> I like Chevys. But uh, facts are facts. And the way I beat my Ford, small block, I don't think there's a Chevy out there that could take it. <clears throat> So there's your first offensive uh, for the Chevy guys. Alright, so I wrote down some strokers, what you can do with the small block Chevy stuff. So 350 can go as big as a 383 or a 389. Might be able to get 400 out of it with a max, max bore. 400 can go as big as 434. Turn you guys around so you can see what I got. 302... If you want to push it, 360, but a lot of guys go 347. 351 can go as big as 430. So the small blocks are relatively close. A lot of guys compare these two right here. Never a 305 to a 302, but 350 to a 302. But that's okay. We're going to get to that later. Small deck 454 can go... 500 cubes. I think it was 490 around there. Tall deck 454. You can get 580 ish out of it. Big block 460. 589 cubic inches. So your big block, you get a couple more cubes out of it. Ford. Small block Chevy, you get a couple more cubes out of it compared to the Ford. Now. Get into the 350 versus 302 argument. I've always loved this argument. I'm talking about a Chevy motor that has bigger valve right out of the gate. The heads have bigger valves in them. The heads flow more. They are bigger runners. All right? So then people say, yeah, but the Ford has a bigger cam factory. It's like 10 inches of lift. Stock for stock, if I remember correctly. Could be wrong. Depends on the year of the engine and all that. Remember, this is 350. This isn't a 260. This isn't a 305. It's a 350 engine. Now, parts-wise, what it takes to make one run. I have listed everything from my small block Chevy online, minus details and not one person has asked me about those details and i'm not going to give the secrets away of what i have planned but i will say this the stock bottom end 350 it has aluminum heads that are ported sportsman twos not the greatest head still a 200 runner big valve 205 or 208s in them they've been decked down some ported like I said, solid roller camshaft, okay? Solid roller, just under 600 lift. Stock bottom end, 350. Plan to notch the pistons to make that cam fit. Now, stock bottom end, 350, with a 60-something cc chamber is around 8.5, 9 to 1, roughly. Now, you... Put a smaller chamber head, like I have these power pack heads on. I believe they're 58 cc. That gets you up around nine and a half or so. If I figured it out right, when I put the specs in on the calculator, I came up with like nine and a half to one with what I have here, with like a 30 or 40 thousandths head gasket, whatever the factory compressed thickness head gasket is. It's around nine and a half to one. Factory pistons, dished piston, and that's taking. The deck height and piston, because these are in the hole. These pistons are in the hole about 20-something thousandths. 
20 to 24 thousandths from what I've researched. Now you can correct me if I'm wrong. Some of you guys will know more than me. So that being said, with a tunnel ram, two carburetors, 600, double pumpers, hollies. So with that being said, that whole combination, the fastest time I got from the guys that don't really know me or have done this similar combination, but with a single plane intake, single carb intake, I should say, was 1130s. Now I understand that's over 3,000 pounds. And I got a lot of people, not a lot, but a couple, handful of guys that said 1130s, like two or three. And then I got a lot of people saying 12s. 12s. Now I have a problem with 12s out of a 350 cubic inch engine with aluminum heads, solid roller. Very big problem with a 12 second pass. If that thing goes 12s, I better have about four spark plug wires unhooked. I'm going to tell you right now, if it goes 12s, you will see, see me, I promise you, you will see me pull this Chevy engine out, sell it, and I will put a 302 Ford motor in this 55 Bel Air. I kid you not. A stock, stock E7 headed 302 engine. And here's why. This is why right here. I have been 1180s at 2,700 pounds with a T5, factory T5, stock, untouched, E7 heads, stock, untouched bottom end, stock camshaft, stock valve springs, stock rockers, stock push rods, stock lifters, with a factory replacement dual plane action plus but it says on the ad, if you can find the ad on Summit, it's used to say, factory replacement intake manifold for Ford 302 for 85, 86 Mustang, or 85, I'm sorry, 85 Mustang GT. Getting a little hyper here. Because I just got in a big argument with one of my buddies about how junk Fords are. They're just junk. That's it. Now, just because you argue with someone doesn't make them a bad person. Just because they have a different opinion doesn't make them a bad person. Because the guy's a great guy. Love the guy. Good guy. So I'm not trying to put nobody down here. But I have a very big problem when people want to compare apples to oranges. For instance, an LS motor to a 302. Something where the technology is from the 60s to a 90s technology late 90s or early 2000s, whatever year them things came out. They are in a different realm. They started the new fad where stuff started going fast with stock crap. But I will say this, a Ford 351 Windsor can do the same thing as an LS. I'm willing to go as far and say maybe even more dependable. Because I've seen a couple stock block 351 Windsors go relatively fast. Just as fast as an LS. The only difference is a stock block Windsor will need a head on it. And I'm going to be honest. I think it might be able to do it with a factory casted head. And this is going to upset a lot of people. Maybe one day I'll build a turbo motor just to prove this point. Now, there are some fast LS engines out there. There are. But your regular Google build LS, they go eights. Eight seconds. You know how fast a stock block Windsor can go with a turbo and a set of heads and a cam shoved in it? Eights. Do the same thing. Only difference is one's from the 80s and one's from the 90s. Actually, one's 60s technology and one's from the 90s. But I'm talking roller block, so we'll say 80s. <laughs> Stock block 351 Windsor can go 8s. Roller block. Now it needs a head to do it. Yes, it does. 
because the heads don't flow as much as an LS do out of the box. Technology. Now, if you want to compare your LS to a 351 like I just did, now we can really step it up. You know what else came in in about a 10-year gap or so? The Coyotes. Now, I love when LS guys, they compare the Coyote motor. They're junk. Takes four cams to do it. Do you realize how retarded, idiotic, and just downright ignorant you sound when you say takes four cams to do it you don't know how many times i see that comment online let's talk about this for a second four cams not one four another buddy of mine said yeah but they don't have a timing chain <laughs> i can't believe that was somebody's sticking up for the ls motor not only do they have one timing chain, not only do they have two, but they have three. Three timing chains. They have lifters, believe it or not. They also have little rockers. Not only do they have 16 valves, they have 32. You want to talk about rotational mass and weight? Now, yes, they're all aluminum, so they're a light engine as far as that goes. You want to talk about a light valve train, though? Nah. Not a Coyote. Sorry. Yeah, the lifters might be this big, and they might be light per lifter. That stuff adds up, especially when you have 32 of them. Let's think about this. 32. Not 16. Double. All right? And people hate when you compare these motors. But a guy said it best on one of the forums. He goes, go to any drag and drive. And just walk the pits. See how many LS motors are torn apart. And see how many Fords are torn apart. Now I'm going off of this gentleman's word. But I can believe it. He said. A lot of LS motors were getting torn down. And rebuilt. Where a lot of the Ford stuff. They just sat in the car. Or they were hanging out in the pits. And the Fords were staying together. Now, I'm not going to say that if you're pushing the car, it's not going to have a problem. I'm not saying Fords don't have problems. Because I haven't even touched big blocks yet. But, all the technology that we've had, and the problems that the LS has, that stuff should have been corrected 15 years ago. The oiling problems, the stuff they need barbells why wouldn't you put a, an aluminum barbell in the car factory in that engine factory this is stupid tedious stuff that i'm picking apart but this is stuff i personally had problems with and it sucked because the motors do run and ls will run its nuts off to be quite honest with you excuse my french like it the car was pretty quick it also blew up pretty quick too I did the same thing. I've actually, I actually, my LS was nicer than my 302 condition wise. As far as putting it in the car, pulled the pan, looked at it, it's pretty clean. Put it all back together, shoved the cam in it, ported the heads, plopped it together, intake was ported. Car went pretty fast. Went 1120s, first pass out, spinning all over the road. <laughs> Ten, probably a mid 10 second engine. And that was me letting out of it, 1120s. The 1,000 foot, I went 116 mile an hour. The quarter mile, I went 115. So, whatever it picked up and let off between that time, you know. I will say it was definitely in the 10s, though, because I think it went a 1,860 foot. And I know that car probably on motor would have did like a 1,4. So... Now, my 302, a lot of you guys know what I had in that. That was, at the end, it was a stock bottom end, notch pistons, Anderson M51 cam, Porta E7s, and then the heads were milled, GT40 size valves, which the valves and the head milling, the car didn't really pick up with. I was actually really upset about that. I did that stuff and the car went no faster. It went the same. And then the Action Plus intake. However, I did put a 750 on it. The car went from a 1090 to a 1080. 
switch on the carburetor. So 1080 is out of a stock 302, and the car was a little bit lighter in 2700. When I think I had it down to 26 because I put the steel hatch back on. At one time, the car was high 25s with me in it. <laughs> but with the steel hatch on it, the car was 2,600 pounds. And that car did go 1080s with that weight. And that car, the doors were cut and the front end's tubed. Other than that, the car's not cut. The C pillars, the B pillars, the A pillars, all that stuff's still there. And it has the heater in it and a radio, two seats. So it's a street car. This is an average Fox body weight. I get told how light the car is. This is average weight for a Fox body that you do the regular stuff to. I've actually had cars lighter. I've had four-door cars lighter than what that Mustang was. Believe that or not. And that's without cutting the cars up. So, now let's talk about the big block stuff a little bit since I ran it about the small block, LS, Coyote, all that. Personally, I've seen more faster big block Chevys than big block Fords, as much as that hurts me to say a little bit, because I, like I said, I've had Fords. Now, I don't know if that's builder error, because a lot of people, they don't understand a big block Ford. And there are some guys that have some pretty fast big block Fords. But a big block Chevy, like, is the original LS. I know they were called LS7s and stuff back in the day. But that is, like, how an LS motor reacts to a cam. A big block Chevy is the same way. The problem with the big block stuff is a lot of the times the heads are almost too big. The exhaust, like a Ford, the exhaust, you know, the half fill trick that people used to do with the tongues and stuff and the exhaust port, you know, all them tricks. Just like the Cleveland heads, you fill them to make them work, all that. <coughs> but the 454s, I actually had an aftermarket block, big block Chevy at one time. I was going to put it in my Mustang. And it was... Uh, 565 I was building I figured I wanted to make 800 horsepower pump gas on motor and then either put a big blower like 871 on top 1071 something big or nitrous I figured I'd probably start with nitrous and then put a blower on it but I wanted it to be drivable street friendly you know hop in the car drive to work hour away no problem so hydraulic roller Big hydraulic roller, the biggest one I could put in it lift-wise because I had big Brody 2s for it. Probably would have been a gangster. But that's probably. Who knows, it might have been a dud. But getting back to my point, I've seen more big block Chevys, pretty simple combinations, run just as good if not better than the big block Fords more so they're faster in big block Fords there are some like I said some fast big block Ford guys but most your big block Fords they go nines you know buddy of mine they sprayed it car went low tens on the bottle wasn't a lot of nitrous and it was in a Mustang the kid we got the parts from for my dad's stuff that car it was Mustang Big block, dove heads, the same camshaft. The car went 12s, 1290s or 1260s. And that's in a 05 to 09 Mustang, two Kirkies in it, weight taken out of it. So yeah, the car's probably 33, 3,500 pounds, but 1290s? Come on, man. A three valve goes 1290s with a tune and bolt ons. It's not fast at all. Like you gotta be careful who you tell that stuff to, because you tell it to the wrong like you tell that to the wrong guy. <laughs> They'll be like, some people are just blunt. I'm one of them guys. My father's one of them guys. Sorry to throw you under the bus. But you say 1290s with a big block, <laughs> we're going it's gonna be written on our face. Like that kid, he didn't know me from a can of paint, so maybe he couldn't tell. But when he told me what that ran, I almost gave him back the camshaft. Because I was like, man, there's got to be a problem, and this is probably it. It's probably the cam. This thing had to be wiped out or something. 
Hopefully it's not. It looks like it's in good shape. The lifters look good and all. So that's why I bought it. But it's like... It makes you worry almost. It's like, what did this guy do wrong to go that slow with 460 cubic inches in a Mustang? And I'm sorry if I offend anyone. I'm sorry if I come off cocky. You know, I try to... I try not to be biased. I try to be honest. You know, I, I beat on stuff pretty hard. Like, and this is why I was a 302 guy and still am. And always will be. Right now, it is... It's probably 20 degrees out. Forgive my garage. This car right here. In this weather. If I wanted to go somewhere right now. You know how I'd warm that car up? I wouldn't just... I'd idle it up a little bit. Let it get, you know, 10 degrees in it or so. I'd also flash it to like 3, 4 grand. Whatever it would do before the carburetor would stumble. <laughs> then once it didn't stumble. <laughs> this cold weather, 302 loves them. Know how I know that? So I'd get up the road after some heat was built in it. And I'm sure my dad heard me a lot of times. From our house, where I used to live when that car ran. Probably about two miles up the road, if that. It was 206. Now, 206 is a pretty straight road. I would turn on 206. Get it up to about 2,500 RPM. Just hit that thing. And let off. Felt good. Car was fast. You know? I ran it in that weather. When the car went its best times was in the cold weather. I gotta say though. A lot of people who knew me back then. When I would do that stuff. When that motor finally lost oil pressure. Didn't it blow up. It started knocking. All right. That motor started knocking after it was in, I don't know, three or four cars probably. Because it was my dad's motor. It went in my Mustang. And then it went in this other, my other Mustang. Because I wrecked the first one I had. And then whatever it was in before that. That motor was supposed to be rebuilt. It was on a stand. Getting ready to put rings and bearings in it. And my dad needed a motor. For the green Mustang that I have now. He got it for like 200 bucks. They slapped it together. My dad got it. And my dad used to drive 60 miles one way to pick me up as a kid. Because I was a teenager when he put that car together. Every weekend. And then wherever he went. Racing the car. Driving it. We used to cruise every weekend around. We had to drive. 100 miles a day that sounds like a lot but at least 60 a day I'll say 50 we'll just say 50 a day and plus that's not counting him taking me home but I mean from Mount Holly to Browns Mills Pemberton if you if you're for local to Jersey or no Jersey to Aco you know, Southampton, all around those areas, to different people's houses, stopping by, talking, going racing, street racing. For crying out loud, my dad had a hood in the back of the car and was playing around, you know, racing people with it. He had a hood for a ranger back in the, with the seats folded down at one time, just messing around, you know, like, not, you know, probably hitting the third gear and out, but... That motor from that car to my green Mustang, me beating the snot out of it, you know, holding the thing wide open at 6,000. You could ask people that rode in the car. Our buddy Chuck, my man tells the story, it's hysterical. You would think the car didn't have a rev limiter in it, but he goes, I don't know what he was shifting that thing at. He was. But whatever it was, it was up there. 
the car has a limiter at like 6300 <laughs> it would actually float the lifters at 62 but and it wasn't the rev limiter it was the lifters because it did it in my dad's car that's what i would shift that though off the off valve spring float now at the track i ran it kind of easy i did break the rear i broke the trans we had it over clutched i went through like three transmissions and then i wrecked that car then it went in my black car drove that car around from 2009 to no i'm sorry 2011 to 2013 when it lost oil pressure now before it lost oil pressure it started knocking so i was like if the motor's gonna blow up might as well blow up i added more nitrous i put a second kit on the car not knowing what i know now i had 300 going through this all right 300 shot of nitrous going through this motor stock motor didn't even need a 300 on it looking back because E7s, they don't use it. It's a waste of time with a stock E7. But 300 shot of nitrous, car ran 1060s, pull the wheels, whatever. And then finally it lost the oil pressure after however many passes. One year I put 198 track passes on this car. 198, if I remember correctly, I counted. Because I was trying for 200. And I was just under 200. That's not counting street passes. That's not counting me beating the crap out of it. That's not me trying to run from the cops. Because I did that in that car too. I was clocked at 130 mile an hour. With the car flat out. Passing Bob's radiator. I beat that motor so bad. And it lost oil pressure. I still have the motor. It's sitting in the shed. Uh, I want to rebuild it one day. And that's not... I'm not even telling you everything I did to that motor. The motor in the green Mustang. It came out of my buddy's wagon. Which is actually in my dad's car right now. It's that motor. Same one. That motor came out of my buddy's wagon. Who knows where it was before that. It went from that to my four-door Fairmont. Now I sold the short block in the Fairmont. And it was good. It didn't have rust or nothing in it. The guys that got it put an LS in the Fairmont. So one day they hit me up. And the guy goes, yo, we're taking the hood scoop off the car if you want it. I know you said it was sentimental. Would you like it back? I said, yeah, sure. So they go, would you like your old 302 back too? We were going to sell it, but we're not going to, we don't even care. Just if you want it, you can have it. Now the green car needed a motor at the time. So I was like, heck yeah, free 302. I'll take that. Why not? So I go there after I already said I would take it. I look at it and it's full of rust. And I'm like... Man, that's a shame, because that was a clean motor. So I grab it. Did have an Anderson cam in it. The N51, that's still in it. So I'm like, well, it was free. Not out nothing. So we get the motor here unloaded. And my dad goes, I think we could clean that up. He goes, I don't know. He goes, but uh, we could try it. I'm like, yeah, get some PB Blaster. So you got scotch Bright pad? He goes, yeah, I got a couple of them. So we started scotch Bright in the cylinders with a maroon scotch Bright pad and PB Blaster. A rusty engine. Now, it wasn't like pitted bad. It did have some pretty rough spots in it. There was one bad spot that I still remember. I was like, I don't know. I might break a ring, but I'm going to try it. So we did that. <laughs> put the motor in the car well I put it together I put the motor in the car and I figure well I'll put a good you know put a, some oil filter in it run oil through it change it now Mickey with the orange Mustang I forget his YouTube name on here but a lot of the guys that follow me follow him. 
or vice versa, whatever. He was here when I pulled the plug off of that oil pan. I'd be lying to you if I said how much water came out of this engine. It felt like it was never going to stop. I don't even know how the short block could hold that much water, to be honest with you. Straight water. And I remember sitting there going, this thing might spin a bearing as soon as I start it. Yeah, I've, I've spun the motor by hand, things like that. It turned, wasn't locked up. I'm like, man, I said, this was a waste of time. I said, I don't know if this thing's going to even stay together. But it was free, not out nothing. But whoop. I got another one in the shed that I can rebuild if I have to. <coughs> that motor is in my dad's car right now. That motor went nines. Think about that. Just let that sink in, what I just told you. Now, there's not many people on here that would even run an engine like that. Especially, like, if you own a machine shop. And I'm not trying to take digs at nobody. So, I hope nobody gets offended. But, like... A, a guy that is into this... I'm sorry, there's not there's a very select few that would run that motor. Now, yeah, it was already in the car. I still had to finish it up. I mean, I don't know if it was wired or not. I can't remember looking back. I think there was a lot that I had to do to it still. <coughs> but that motor ran. And it ran like at 2019 is when I got that motor back. Excuse me. 2019 or... I think it was 19. Yeah, it was 2019. I got that motor back and ran that. Here we are in 2024. And that motor has never seen a new bearing, a new ring, nothing. Now, who's to say what it's going to need when I pull it back out of his car and go to put it in this one? You know, hopefully it's still good. But that is incredible when you think about it, that a motor like that can, in that condition, can do what it did. That is why I like a Ford 302. And honestly, the 351 stuff, I've never gotten real into them. I've always been worried about the, the pistons in them, you know, being weak. Even this 350 cast piston, the hyper pistons. I'm gonna mess that word up, so I'm just gonna call them hyper pistons. You guys will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I'm always worried about that, so I never ran a 351 to be honest. That's one of the reasons. I had a couple of them. I had one that I paid eighty dollars for. But I never ran it because of that reason. I push stuff to the limit. The black car, it used to melt plugs every other pass. I ended up putting like a couple splashes of race gas in it to every five gallons of pump. It was probably 95 octane because it was only Sunoco 110 or something like that. But that's, the car was on kill. I was running guys that had built motors with that car. And I mean, I would, when I say I sprayed it, the first time I ever sprayed it was on regular gas with 36 degrees of timing on a hunter shot. Ripping it up and down the road because the car didn't feel fast. I'm like, man, this thing feels like crap. I was like, that's nitrous. This thing don't even feel fast at all. I'm like, yeah, I guess it's working because I can hear the RPM buzz up a tiny bit faster. I can hear it, you know, the slight bit that it jumps. But I, I called my buddy. I said, man, this thing's slow. So I don't know if the nitrous isn't working. I, I said, it's got to be working. He goes, pull a plug. Pull a plug. I said, yeah. I said, he goes, what's it look like? I said, it's purple. He goes, pull timing out, right? I said, no. He goes, you put 93 in it? I said, no. He goes, you can't spray it like that. I said, well, I just did. Like five times up and down the right in front of the house. Never heard a piston in that. Never broke a ring. 
I don't know. Just junk through too. That's all they are. That's why I'm a four guy though. They're dependable. How do you beat the snot out of something like that and just, it takes it. I'm not going to say I never blew a head gasket because I blew them a couple times. But that's a detonation. It could have ate a piston instead of blowing the head gasket. Instead, I popped the head gasket. Had ARP head bolts in it. Reused those, I don't know how many times. I actually broke one off in the one motor. It was mixed with studs and head bolts. I had a buddy of mine come and tap it out. Probably because it was old and used. But that's the stuff that I've done. This 350, it's budget. Whatever I can reuse, I'm reusing. Not head bolts. I'll put a good set of head bolts in it. Probably no ones. Unless I can find ARP studs or bolts used. I'll put those on. But like the intake bolts and stuff, I got them in a box. I'm going to reuse all that stuff. Don't hurt nothing. Might look a little ugly, but... I don't care. I'm not spending the money on it. It's a junk 350. How long is it going to stay together? Thing might last four seasons. Might la That's what I'm trying to learn. I'm not just learning for me. I'm learning to show you guys what it can do, what it can't. Because I'm going to push it to the limit. After this, it's going to get a blower on it. I've had guys tell me you can't go over seven pounds of boost. Guess what? I'm going to pull it for ten. And I'm going to switch the pulleys around and see what it does on 20. If it don't go what I want it to go. Because I got a time for it to go on motor, and I got a time for it to go with the blower on it, and I will push it. Because that's what I do. I push the stuff max. The LS, I didn't even get to push it. That made one pass, I let out of it early, and it just it didn't do it. It didn't do what I wanted it to do. These 302s, though, that were in both of these cars, I pushed to the max. There was, a, there was a time where I almost ran the one motor. I had zero oil pressure at idle. I almost ran it. I think it went up to 20. I almost said, well, I could run it, but I didn't run it. I pulled it apart because I wanted to save it and try to fix it and see what the problem was, and I never did. And the, here the car sits. It's been a part ever since. I did the green Mustang, but this black one hasn't been out since that motor was in it. I had a blower on it. And honestly, it might have been a blessing because I found out that the rear, the bolts were ready to fall out of the rear on it. Came loose. Sometimes stuff happens for a reason, but, you know, part of me is a little upset about it. But it's my own fault at the end of the day. I got so many cars that I could have put that car first and made it a priority and got it done. But that's not what this video is about. But as far as these... This Chevy vs. Ford crap. Some of you guys might have good luck with the GM stuff. I pulled this motor apart. Guess what it's missing? Cam button. Ford don't need a cam button in it. Stupid stuff like that that makes a difference in an engine. But I will say this. Four bolts for a water pump's nice. And they didn't snap off. I don't know how much of a problem that is on a small block Chevy, but I know on the Fords, I snapped them off a couple times. I got lucky and got them out pretty easy, but they do snap, and it sucks. It's not a fun time. <coughs> Stupid stuff like that, though. That's what makes or breaks these motors, these engines. It's how, like the head bolts on this. That's nice. It's got the head bolts that clamp the head down. But it's got, what, five extra head bolts in it? Or four? One, two, four. Say four extra head bolts in it. I don't need. Four don't have that many head bolts in it. You might say, well, you had head gasket problems. Yeah, that's me detonating it. Not because it don't have the head bolts in it. Just little things like that that are the difference between the two engines that make them either nice or crappy. But they they go hand in hand. These old school small blocks, honestly, we'll see how dependable the Chevy motor is. I don't know. But it is nice to work on. I will say that. It's pretty easy. The one I had in the Blazer when I bought it was decent to work on. You know, it wasn't bad. And that motor, it ran good. Wasn't as fast as I think it should have been.
because it was a stroked motor. But uh, to, to me, if you have pistons, rods, like even a piston and rod combo and an engine with compression, the cam, aftermarket heads, that stuff to me, it, it the engine should wake up. Like, the Blazer was 3,100 pounds. It went 1120s on motor with that setup in it. But, I mean, think about it. The RPM, it's turning. I think I think turned like 7,500, 8,000. I mean, it sounded good. You know, it was quick. You put that in a light car, I mean, 500 pounds is half a second. So, when you figure it that way, you know, it's, what, 1070 1070 half a second now let's break this down if my mustang was 3100 pounds half a, half a second it's a difference 500 pound difference that's half a second 1130s with a 302 one tenth different with a head that doesn't even flow 200 cfms they're right at 200, but they don't, they're 190 something. And people go flow number crazy. That's going to be another video. That's going to upset a lot of people. This video is almost an hour long, and forgive me. But getting back to what I'm saying, E7 that flows just under 200 CFMs with a 530 lift cam, not a 600 or 580, 590, whatever. One tenth. The thing is, the Blazer with sixty is sixty pretty well on motor. Went a one five sixty, same as my Mustang did. Now I probably would have went a faster sixty, lighter, yeah. But that's also where the time comes in, you know. So it had the power and the torque. Kind of fell off up top, but I mean, I think it did one eighteen or somewhere around there on motor. Which is about right, I guess, for 1120 pass. But it's like half a second difference. I don't know. I just stock bottom end 302 with a factory head with a cam and a dual plane compared to a with a 750 compared to a we'll say a 377 because it's supposed to be a D stroke 400. With a rod piston combo with aftermarket steel heads with a 580 solid roller cam compared to hydraulic roller with a 950 carburetor and a single plane. I mean, that is apples to oranges when you compare the two engines. Like, when you tell me an engine like that, to me, that's a 10 second motor. And I mean, I didn't mess with it long. I changed the cam in it. Might have made a couple mistakes here and there with it, but it could have went tens. I, you know, with some more work, maybe changing the heads. But come on, man. Just people say, "Oh, Blazer ran good." Not really. That's my own vehicle. You know, that's my own. I, I owned it. That's that's. Maybe it's me. I didn't put the motor together. That's how I got it. You know, I, I messed with timing and I got it to go the 1120 that they claimed it went. <coughs> if I had to mess with it to get it there, I think the truck went like 1130s or something the first couple times and I pumped timing in it and then it finally went 1120s. I should have went with more timing to try it, but that's why, like, a small block Chevy so far, that motor there kind of turns me off a little bit when I think about it. So we're going to see what this one does. This one I'm building. So if it's slow, then it's either me or if it runs around with the Blazer ran, which this car, weight-wise, will be around there. goes 1120s then it's a chevy thing 
That's all I can think of, because it's, you know, granted, this would be more impressive going 1120s than the, the other engines. Cause like I said, rod and piston combo. This is a stock bottom end engine. Stock crank rods, pistons. Where that motor had a rod and piston combo, and that makes a big difference. You're talking about 11 to 1 compared to whatever this ends up being. This is a 9.5 to 1 setup. If I were to put those heads on this motor, it's 9.5 to 1. Or, I'm sorry, not even. It's probably around 8.5 to 9. Because I forgot they're a 64cc chamber, those, those dart or Iron Eagle heads. So, you put it in that perspective, I mean, you know, it's not looking too good. For a 350 cubic inch or 400 cubic inch small block compared to a 302. Just how I see it, guys. You guys probably didn't watch to the end of this, but if you did, thank you for listening to my rant. Hopefully you learned a little something. Hopefully it you know, makes the gears turn in your heads a little bit and gets you pondering. You guys might hate me after this video, you might love me to death, but just my honest opinions and facts from my perspective and what I've done personally and what we're going to do. So we're going to see how long, how good, if this motor goes what I want it to go, then you're going to see another video where I state the facts. Whether it goes it or not, you're going to see a video on what this thing does. We're going to round it up, tally everything up, budget-wise, what it has in it, what it needed to do it, all that. But this is a max effort budget build. I mean, you're talking about something with a crank trigger and a belt drive on it, on a stock bottom end. I mean, that's, you know, notching the pistons, making stuff fit. This is max effort. So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. See what we do here in the future. I know I don't put a lot of videos out, but you guys don't mind i guess subscribing if you want to if you like this type of content and i apologize for this long rant but hopefully it shines a little light into the perspective where i'm coming from and this small block world and even the big block stuff you guys have a good one i'll see you later and good luck this season get those projects done and come out spring swinging that's what we're trying to do Catch you guys later.